The Blackmagic is one of the most versatile cameras that you can build rigs for and just trick out any way you want to. In this video, I'm gonna be giving you a step-by-step -step guide on how to build my Blackmagic production rig. This is the rig that I use to shoot all of my client work. Everything from running gun to stabilized footage is usually being shot on this thing. And to make this really, really convenient, I'm going to list every part and link every part down below. That way it is super, super easy for you guys. What's going on guys? I wanna welcome you to my step-by-step -step build guide for the production rig that I use for the Blackmagic Pocket 6K cinema camera. So if you need a reference video, or if you just wanna see how I build the things I build, this is gonna be the video for you. Also, if you're somebody who is like super advanced at building these things, and you just want some more recommendations and just kinda of wanna tweak your rig, go ahead, stay tuned, and we're gonna get this thing going. So the first thing I always use when it comes to building a rig like this is I get this handy tool from Small Rig. Now, as you can see, it's just a tiny little tool that has a bunch of different pieces and a bunch of different knobs and things in here that you may want to use when putting this thing together. So first things first is going to be the Black Magic's cage. We're going to be using the cage from Tilta. I love this cage and the accessories that go along made from Tilta is the reason that I love the Black Magic rig that I have. So installing the cage is super simple. You're just gonna put the camera in the cage, attach the top and bottom screws. All right, so this thing is good to go. The next thing I wanna do is install the base plate for the camera. So here we have the Tilta base plate. This thing's pretty awesome because it just slides on. Usually, so I have the small rig one and it's a screw in base plate, but the great thing with the Tilta one is it has this really satisfying slide mechanic to it, and then it tightens up front. So yeah, that's pretty dope. <laughs> All right, so I wanna install the sun hood. Let's go ahead and get this out of the way. This thing is dope because it holds the SSD and it gives you you know protection from the sun because this black magic screen is kind of dim, but this thing is going to make it a lot better. Also, real quick, I've gone ahead and installed the SSD holder on there. It's really easy. You just punch out the old one and screw this one into the new one, but, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop this thing right on the back of here. It should kinda lock in place, and we just screw it in from the top. Nice. Next up, one of my favorite pieces, the freaking handle. I adore this handle. It's a, almost like a hot shoe design, but it just kinda slides in, locks in, and tightens down. This thing is pretty dope. I'm gonna switch it for the other camera. So yeah, as you can see on the handle, I have already installed our monitor mount. So as you can see, the monitor mount we're gonna be using is from Small Rig. I went ahead and took the time to install that one because I usually never take it off the handle. So there's really just one small screw and I just get it as tight as I can to support the monitor. So the next thing I like to do is install my 15 millimeter rods. So quick tip, if I'm not putting a V-mount battery on this setup, I'm usually just using this short 15 millimeter rod that comes with our follow focus. So these 16 inch rods are perfect exact length to fit the matte box and the full size battery. So we're gonna get these things installed. It is super, super simple. All right, so we'll worry about fine tuning these later, but we have our foundation to attach accessories onto our camera build. Now, I wanna go ahead and attach my V-mount battery to the back of this thing. The V-mount battery plate that we use is from Fotka, or I don't know how exactly you say it, but it just has a wide variety of solutions when it comes to mounting the battery and you know powering different things that you may want to power. So I put it so the V-mount sits up, and basically I put it to where it mounts on these back sides. That way, if I ever need to get to my screen, I can just move the battery up and touch my screen because I know it's a little hard with the sun hood in the way. I got a lot of questions about that. This thing is really easy to do. It just slides onto the 15 millimeter rods. After you slide it onto the rods, you just kind of tighten it. Yeah, so now you have this movement. You can like, you have some flexibility to it. And the V-mount battery that we're going with is a 95 watt D and O battery. Now for extended shoots, I love to use this setup. And if you want something that's even longer, just get like 190 watt, get one of the bigger V-mount batteries. It's gonna be a lot heavier, and that's one of the downsides to using V-mounts, but the fact that you can power any and everything from this thing is super handy. V-mounts are awesome, they just slot right in place, add some weight to the back of the camera. All right, and if there is like no room to lift this thing up when you're installing it, that means my rails are up too far. So, 
we just need to adjust these things. So now, when I'm using my V-mount, it's up and out of the way. I can make any adjustments that I need, but for look and convenience, it just sits right back on the back of the camera. All right, so to balance out this weight, let's install one of my favorite lenses. This is the Sigma 18 to 35 1.8, the lens for the Black Magic. Everybody has this thing, everybody talks about it. I don't need to say any more on it. We know how to install lenses. Boom, boom, solid. Balances the weight out. All right, we're coming along great. All right, so one of the next things I wanna install is one of my favorite pieces of gear that I have recently bought. This is the Tilta Follow Focus Mini. This thing is mechanical, it is no batteries. Freaking awesome, lightweight, sits right on this side of my camera, right at the rails. So I mentioned this in the last video, and if you haven't seen that video, go check it out after this one. But the throw of the follow focus is the exact throw for the focusing of this particular lens. So freaking awesome. Next up, before we get to something large, I wanna go ahead and install this Samsung SSD. Now, the great thing about the Blackmagic, of course it writes to SSDs and you don't have to worry about memory cards or CFAS cards because they can get kind of expensive. This is for the price, the best value, but Another great thing about the Tilta cage is you get this locked in SSD cord. So this thing screws to the cage and it screws to the actual drive. I'm gonna go sideways here for my top down camera. Basically to keep this simple, you just drop it into your SSD spot and just tighten it. There's a flathead screwdriver area on here that you can tighten it extremely well. But for this build, we're just gonna leave it at that. The cage comes with some cable management just gonna loop that in there. Up here is where we're going to tighten it as well. This one's a bit harder. But yes, a flathead is definitely, definitely recommended to get this thing solid. But right now it's not going anywhere. We take our SSD, loosen the cage screw for it, slide it in with the word Samsung facing up because apparently they're slightly asymmetrical, not triggering at all and tighten this thing back down. So yes, SSD is good. I went with the gold one because yeah, gold. <laughs> oh God, that's terrible. So one of the next things I wanna do has to do with the matte box. So I decided to go with the Polar Pro matte box, the base camp. This thing is awesome. It has a variable ND filter in it. You know, it's a drop in two to five stop variable ND, has a polarizer here on the back. This thing is pretty incredible. Very expensive, very proprietary, but I don't know. I, I feel like it makes, it just makes the build feel a lot more complete. This thing has a very simple setup to it. It has a 77 millimeter adapter that comes with it. It also comes with an 82 millimeter. But what I've done is I've installed a 72 millimeter to 77 millimeter step up ring. Let me see if I can see that from me. It's very, very hard to see, but it's just a step up ring to get the Sigma up to 77 millimeters. So yeah, basically just install that to the front of the lens and the base camp has a tension mount and it just kind of sits on there and tension straps down. So now if you want to loosen the flag to make this thing look, you know, beastly, that is how you do it. Matte box are super useful, but they also make your camera look pretty awesome. I love that about it. All right, so we are almost there. One of the next things is my monitor. I like to use a seven inch monitor from Small HD. This is a Small HD Focus 7, but you can use any monitor that you want to. I just recommend a seven inch because it is, if you already have a rig this big, then just go ahead and get a seven inch monitor. This thing is easy. It just goes on to our monitor mount and just screws in. The great thing about the monitor mount that we've chosen is if you really, really wanna get some tension, and get this thing to where it will not fall off. You can do that by just using a little small rig toolkit. So now, boom. So we almost have this thing completely done. The next thing I wanna do is start hooking up a few cables before we put our side handle on there because I don't like to keep those little flappy things on the side of the Black Magic. They get in the way even though it's protection. It's not water resistant anyway, so I don't even worry about it. Now, what well, the first thing I wanna hook up is going to be the HDMI cable. All right, so after we get the HDMI port hooked up, we want to power the monitor using a Sony MPF2 
DTAP cable. DTAP goes straight into the battery. This is a really easy install. Just dropping that, routing it around to the battery. Plugs in right here on the DTAP battery. Now, one thing you may notice is this cable dangling down. I do recommend you get some kind of cable management or you, know, you can just kind of like zip tie it to the side of the cage. But today's build, we're going to let it hang. I'm sorry if it triggers your OCD. After we've powered our monitor, let's go ahead and power the camera. So here we're gonna be using a LPE6 dummy battery to DC. So if I can get this on camera for you, we're going to take our battery out, battery in to the camera port back here. The camera port is noted by the one that has the camera on it. Please don't plug your camera into any of the ports because you potentially may fry your camera but that is not through experience, just through what I've heard. <laughs> so after all of that is done, we're gonna attach this amazing little side handle. This thing has a slot for a Sony MPF battery in it. So this is gonna allow us to power the camera even longer. If we wanna hot swap batteries, we have that ability. Now, before we get this thing installed, I'm going to want to install the little cable that comes with it. This is just like a little mini DC, plugs right here into the side. It's also going to go into our two pin adapter on the camera. So, boom, that locks in place. The side handle does this awesome thing to where it just satisfyingly locks in place here. And then if you wanted to get it tight, it has a little tension mount there and you are solid. Hey, nice, 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 nice. Okay, to be honest, unless I'm forgetting something, this is my build. Now, one thing you can do, and I would kind of recommend, I don't really do audio on this build. A lot of times I'm recording audio externally, but I've been wanting to record internally more and more. For that, you can get a shotgun mic or you can put a magic arm on this build and kind of put it anywhere you want to. So one thing I like to do is Andy Cine sent me this little tiny, tiny microphone that is really, really good at performing. It's just like the Rode Mini, I believe. So because there is a code shoe mount built on the cage on either side, you're able to just code shoe mount this thing in and then of course plug it in. That way if you want a little bit of extra audio, you know, a little bit of clarity or some wind resistance, you can do that with tiny microphones. That way if you don't wanna get the bigger magic arms, this is what you're gonna want. But for now, I'm going to remove this and keep the build looking a little clean. All right, that is the full build out. Now, usually I'm running it with the smaller rods without this V-mount battery. And if I really want some run and gun stuff, another recommendation is this power pack. This is the power base edge. It sits on the bottom of the camera because it has this little awesome you know, base plate. You can just slot it right into the bottom of the tilter cage and get some extended battery life. This thing gives you about three hours of battery life for the Black Magic, and this is so, so convenient. I keep it with me whenever I'm using a much smaller version of the Black Magic. If I just wanna travel, I don't even wanna use a monitor. I just take this battery pack and take the camera, and that's it, we're good. <laughs> but yeah, we have made it to the end of our journey. This is my production rig that I've been using for all of my client shoots recently and for just about everything except filming this YouTube video. So if you have any questions or if there's anything that you think I missed, let me know down in the comment section and be sure to check the pinned comment because I will keep updates about the rig and about questions that are frequently asked. I'll keep those updates down there. Real quick, couple of things that you can expect coming up. I'm gonna go behind the scenes on a couple of client shoots and show you exactly how I use this rig to get some of the shots that I use and how I stabilize it, run and gun with it, you know, just the basics of everything. So stay tuned for that on the channel. But with that all being said, that's all I have for you today, guys. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you loved it, consider subscribing because I'm gonna be bringing you more content just like this every week. So you guys stay safe, your love, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.